Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain following a visit to the United Arab Emirates, where he met with the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The two leaders reviewed the long standing brotherly relations and ways to enhance cooperation and coordination between the two countries. The meeting also discussed the latest regional and global developments. Upon arrival, His Majesty the King was received by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Secretary General of the Arab League Ahmed Bulghid upon his visit to the Kingdom. His Majesty the King welcomed the Secretary General and expressed appreciation for his efforts in strengthening cooperation and solidarity among Arab countries, defending the just causes of the nation and preserving its gains, security and stability of its people. His Majesty affirmed the Kingdom's support of all endeavors taken by the Arab League, which stems from the beliefs in its pivotal role in enhancing joint Arab action, preserving unity and unifying stances regarding crucial issues. His Majesty and the Secretary General reviewed the ongoing preparations for the 2024 Arab Summit in its 33rd Ordinary Session scheduled to be held in Bahrain. His Majesty the King welcomed the hosting of the upcoming summit, wishing the country's leaders success in achieving positive outcomes that serve the Arab nation and achieve the aspirations of its people. His Majesty said that the rapid developments in the region require continuous consultation and coordination to unify stances and overcome challenges. For his part, the Secretary General briefed His Majesty the King on the summit's agenda and arrangements. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his continued support to the League to continue serving Arab causes and promoting Arab action. He hailed the Kingdom's honorable position under the leadership of His Majesty the King in supporting the nation's issues and defending its interests. The meeting also discussed the latest Arab, regional and international developments. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces, Central Command, a Commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet and Commander of Combined Maritime Forces, Vice Admiral Charles B. Cooper II at Rifa Palace to mark the end of his tenure. 
His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the Bahrain-U.S. partnership and its long-standing and strategic relationship, underscored by numerous joint agreements, including the recently signed Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement. His Royal Highness affirmed the dedication to strengthening strategic ties across various sectors, particularly within the military and defense, to achieve shared goals. His Royal Highness expressed gratitude for the Vice Admiral's efforts in furthering bilateral ties during his tenure. His Royal Highness underscored the pivotal role played by the U.S. alongside various allies in upholding regional security and peace, emphasizing the importance of enhancing bilateral cooperation and coordination across broader areas to meet joint aspirations. During the meeting, the latest regional and global developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust and chairman of the Board of Directors of Tankin, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Ahmed bin Faisal Al Malki, also attended the meeting. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Limsellam, praised the successful outcomes of the recent meeting between the Council and the Central Bank of Bahrain CBB in the presence of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning. The Speaker affirmed the importance of cooperation between the legislative and executive branches led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting discussed the complaints of some citizens about the increasing interest rates on some real estate loans. Lim Salam thanked the governor of CBB, Rashid Al Maraj, for reaching an agreement with the relevant banks to cancel their plans to raise interest rates on some mortgages for beneficiaries of the housing programs and schemes to maintain the interest rates previously agreed upon. The speaker affirmed the council's keenness to support housing projects and meet the needs of the Bahraini family. He praised the response of the banking sector and the role of the private sector in supporting government projects and programs to contribute to the development process. The chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, affirmed that the fruitful cooperation between the legislative and executive authorities is a result of the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to prioritize citizens in various national action paths. He hailed the outcomes of the meeting with the Central Bank of Bahrain, CBB, in the presence of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning. He affirmed the Council's keenness to support housing projects and meet the needs of the Bahraini family. He praised the response of the banking sector and the role of the private sector in supporting government projects and programs to contribute to the development process. As Saleh thanked the governor of CBB, Rashid Al Maraj, for reaching an agreement with the relevant banks to cancel their plans to raise interest rates on some mortgages for beneficiaries of the housing programs and schemes to maintain the interest rates previously agreed upon. The Central Bank of Bahrain CBB has reached an agreement with the relevant banks to cancel their plans to raise interest rates on some real estate loans for the beneficiaries of housing programs and schemes as well as keep the rates agreed upon previously with the borrowers. The move is in line with the CBB's commitment to play in its role in serving the banking sector and those dealing with it. It is also the outcome of the constructive and constant cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, as well as that of the recent joint parliamentary meeting held with the Central Bank of Bahrain and the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning, devoted to discussing some citizens' complaints about banks' hikes of interest rates on private sector real estate loans for the housing services beneficiaries. The Interior Minister and the head of the organization in preparation for the upcoming Arab summit hosted by Bahrain General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met the Secretary General of the Arab League Ahmed Abu Ghaid. The Chief of Public Security, Interior Ministry Under Secretary and the Director General of the Media and Security Culture were also present. The Minister hailed the efforts of the General Secretariat of the Arab League in reinforcing the joint Arab war extremes in all sectors, noting that the fast changes and challenges require joint efforts and cooperation to promote Arab security work. 
The meeting reviewed topics related to the summit and efforts to promote joint Arab security and capabilities to face challenges. The Minister of Tourism and Chairperson of the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, Fatma Slayrafi, presided over the session of the BTEA Board of Directors. The Minister congratulated Sara Bohidji on assuming the role of BTEA CEO and the newly appointed Executive Vice President for Resources and Projects and the Directors. The Board reviewed the preparations to host the DP World Tour Championship for the first time in Bahrain in February, in addition to the Kingdom's hosting of the 20th anniversary of the Formula One Bahrain Grand Prix and the opening round of the World Championship for the 2024 season. It also discussed the latest developments in the tourism sector for the fourth quarter of the last year and progress in implementing the tourism strategy for the years 2022 to 2026, the most prominent tourism projects that were launched and the contribution of the tourism sector to the GDP. The meeting focused on strengthening Bahrain's position as a leading destination for exhibitions, conferences and business tourism. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain has always been keen to establish and achieve a policy of excellence and productivity in all institutions. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister issued an edict to form a committee to evaluate government services centers with the aim of improving the quality of government work and developing government services for citizens and residents. The formation of the committee came to raise the efficiency and effectiveness of the performance of government service centers and instill competitiveness to stimulate innovation and development. The committee also aims to implement the best practices in the field of customer service. The committee focuses on evaluating and classifying government service centers according to an annual plan. Supervisors conduct scheduled and agreed upon field visits and unannounced visits. The committee also works to follow up on raising the classification of government service centers. It periodically submits its reports to decision makers regarding the center eligible for the gold and silver classifications after passing a number of criteria. The committee increased the level of readiness of government service centers and closed 15 customer service centers as a result of development, merging and integration. Nine centers were transferred to work at a headquarters with higher levels of readiness and quality. Centers that meet 90% or more of basic criteria for evaluating improved significantly, reaching 75% of the total centers evaluated. The Under Secretary for Municipalities Affairs, Engineer Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, paid a field visit to Saar Front Development Work. Sheikh Mohammed affirmed the completion of the project, noting its importance due to its strategic location that keeps pace with the major urban expansion in the area. The Under Secretary affirmed that the project was implemented with the support and interest of the Cabinet. He explained that the total area of the project is 2,572 square metres, of which the area of 1,312 square metres has been afforested at the rate of 51% as afforestation has been intensified in this project in accordance with Bahrain's strategic afforestation plan. The president of the Interpol, Major General Ahmed Nasser al raisi visited the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, where he was received by the Director General, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid al-Khalifa.
The delegation was briefed on the goals of the Alternative Sentencing and Open Presence Project, reviewing the achievements, training programs and rehabilitation plans which will help to reintegrate the inmates into society. Major General Al Raisi hailed Bahrain's achievements in alternative sentencing and the gains of American accreditation by the ACA as it is the first country outside the U.S. to obtain this accreditation. The Interpol president also visited the General Directorate of anti corruption and economic and electronic security where he was received by the director general Brigadier Bassam Mohammed Al Miraj and briefed on the achievements of the Interpol and International Affairs Directorate and the latest programs launched. Interpol president hailed the role of the Interpol and International Affairs Directorate in its efforts to combat crimes and track fugitives by introducing the latest security systems. An overwhelming majority of President Joe Biden's fellow Democrats in the Senate backed a statement reiterating U.S. support of a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. 49 of 51 members of the Senate Democratic Axis backed an amendment supporting a negotiation solution to the conflict that resulted in Israeli and Palestinian states living side by side, ensuring Israelis' survival as a secure, democratic Jewish state and fulfilling the Palestinians' legitimate aspirations for a state of their own. With war raging in Gaza between Israel and Hamas, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he objected to any Palestinian statehood that did not guarantee Israel's security. The statement provoked international condemnation. Washington maintained the two-state solution is the only feasible way to bring lasting peace in the region. Many of Biden's fellow Democrats in Congress have been pushing the administration to do more to address the steep toll on Palestinian civilians of Israel's brutal campaign against Hamas since the group's assault on October 7th.